Hey everybody, this is Chris here with Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment tour and demo on the 2022 Nissan Rogue and its 9-inch infotainment display, as well as this 12-inch digital gauge cluster. We'll take a brief look at the cluster, we'll dive into the infotainment, we'll give you a look at Apple CarPlay, and then I'll give you my thoughts at the end of how I think this infotainment system is overall. But before we get started with all of that, let's hop out, take a look at the car, just so you can see what we're working with here. So this new generation of Rogue has been around for a couple of years now, and at first I really didn't like this car, but now after spending a couple of days with this thing, I'm starting to change my mind. Overall, I actually kind of enjoyed my time with this car. Part of that is because they put a new three-cylinder turbo engine in this, which kind of just livens everything up and makes it a bit more unique. So if you want to learn more about the Nissan Rogue beyond just its infotainment system, I will have links in the description to other videos that we have filmed on this car. But for now, let's hop in and let's dive in to the technology in this Nissan Rogue. And let's go ahead and actually start off with this digital gauge cluster since I'm still in POV. We'll just go ahead and look at this first. Let's raise up the steering wheel so you guys can get a better look here. So of course, this is controlled with our steering wheel buttons. And I've been driving it like this with my drive computer manual reset. You also have options in here for a second manual reset or the auto refuel. But what I found is that the auto refuel doesn't actually reset when you'd expect it to. I actually haven't even figured out when it resets um, because I have refueled it since you know the past 199 miles. So I don't know uh, what that's all about. Anyways though, you can scroll through all of your menus here. Of course, this is your drive computer. You've also got a screen that is totally dedicated to your variable compression turbo. You've got a screen for your nav, your weather. You've got, uh, you can see I'm in Apple CarPlay right now, you can see your media. Speed limits if you are driving, which right now we are not. And you also have a settings screen. One thing that's frustrating about this cluster is I have not found a way to check your tire pressure. And not only have I not found a way in the cluster, I haven't found a way in the infotainment screen to find out how much air is in my tires. So even if it does exist, it is not easily accessible. I have not found it anywhere. And um, comment down below if you know where it is because I haven't found it. So let's go ahead and dive into this infotainment system. So right now I just have us on the main screen. Uh, below this nine inch touch screen, we do have a line of buttons to put us into day night mode, skip tracks, audio screen, main menu, map, parking cameras, and then just a normal back button. If you click the menu button, say we're somewhere over here, if you click menu, it takes you back to this main home screen here. Go home uh, for your nav, destinations, and then also uh, a shortcut, quite an attractive shortcut there, to Apple CarPlay right in the middle. You've got three subscreens here. If you scroll one to the left, you can see you have more of a calm screen that you can customize, but default, it comes with just a clock with your date there. As you can see, it, it's not the fastest infotainment. It does lag slightly. And then one over to the right, we have some serious XM things with our current weather. You can see it is 78 degrees outside. And you can even check on stocks if you so desire to. You do have to add them though, add or delete them there. So alongside of just these three main screens or sub screens here and alongside of the buttons, we have some touch buttons here that sit in this row sort of in the middle. We have info takes you to more serious XM stuff. This is all Wi-Fi based things, Nissan Connect services, traffic, weather, all of that sort of thing. And there are two pages of that. Movie listings, that's peculiar. You can search for movies if you'd, uh, if you'd like to, if anyone still goes to the movies. Let's see, it does take a minute for this system to react. Not the worst I've ever seen, but it does take a second. Now, since I do have Apple CarPlay connected, if you click audio, it's gonna take you straight to Apple CarPlay. It just shows you whatever your media source is. You can see what song I'm listening to currently. Let's click menu and go back to our main menu. Of course, this middle menu button uh, takes you to the menu here that we see. You can click map here, and that'll of course take you to navigation. It's a decently attractive looking navigation screen. Again, not the best thing I've ever seen. And of course it does lag slightly um, when you are moving it around though. It doesn't lag as bad as the rest of the infotainment does. You can see it'll, it'll have, have its moments where it is lagging. Notification there at the top of the screen to let me know that a new song has come on. 
Over here you can put in new destinations, point of interest, save locations, and then that is a uh, concierge or letting it know that uh, Nissan is collecting your data, which is slightly unnerving. Anyways, we'll get out of that for now. You can see we have a shortcut back to Apple CarPlay, which I assume will take you back to, oh, no, it doesn't. So that doesn't actually take you to the map setting in Apple CarPlay. And uh, we'll dive into Apple CarPlay here in just a second. Connection screen, you can see all of the phones that we have connected. We have my phone, we have Charlie, Charlie's phone, and we have the Topher's phone down there at the bottom. Those are the devices that are connected. You can connect to Wi-Fi here, turn on your vehicle hotspot. And this would pop up if you had a device USB down here into either the USB-A or USB-C port. Pretty fast reactions if you're pushing buttons. Um, and as you can see, it just went into night mode. Check out that transition, which means our headlights just turned on as well. It's about 8 p.m., the sun is setting. And uh, as you can see, now we are in night mode. We have a black screen here for our navigation. And it just dims everything overall. You can actually adjust the brightness of your cluster over here with this button to the left of the steering wheel. I've got that turned down to right about half. And uh, quick adjust here. Uh, what I like about this actually, having this physical button, so this is day mode, this is night mode, but if you rack fast enough, your uh, brightness adjuster pops up right here at the top of the screen and then it will go away after just a couple of seconds. But what I don't like about a lot of new modern infotainment systems is sure they'll give you a brightness adjust over here for your cluster, that works nicely, but you have to like dive in here really far to find a brightness adjust for the infotainment screen. And I really just don't like that. So it's cool that Nissan gives you that option right here uh, when you take it into day or night mode to just quickly adjust your brightness to your uh, satisfactory level or whatever you prefer. So let's go into Apple CarPlay and take a look at how that looks here. We'll go to our main screen. It is a full screen Apple CarPlay, four apps across. So it isn't the super wide view. And I've noticed that it actually reacts a little bit faster when you're in Apple CarPlay versus when you're just in the normal uh, Nissan screen. So take a look at how fast this reacts, okay? And then we'll go back to the Nissan screen. You can see it does take a little bit longer uh, when you're in the Nissan screen here. So we'll go back to Apple CarPlay. Hello, take me back, thank you. Go back to Apple CarPlay, as you can see there. Take a look at Spotify, see how this looks, here you go. And taking a look here at Apple Maps, you can see here, also reacts quite a bit faster than the uh, in-house built-in navigation screen. So let's go back and actually, I wanna look at one more thing here, um, and that is our audio sources. So we do have, of course, AM, FM, Sirius, XM. Let's hop in here to Sirius XM and just take a look at some of our uh, different controls here with this. One thing that's nice is that we do have a very quickly accessible volume knob. And on the right hand side, we have a tune knob. So if you are a passenger in the car, you are able to tune and switch stations. Something that Charlie is uh, very much a fan of. And if you push here, you can cycle through your different uh, sound adjustments, which is nice. I, I honestly appreciate all of the shortcuts that they've worked into this uh, otherwise quite simple infotainment system. So you can go through here, as you can see, all of our settings are just very standard. But uh, multi-function knob there, and of course, this volume knob here on the left uh, um, doubles as a power on-off for your audio there. So you can see we're back in the Sirius XM. But overall, I gotta say, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with this infotainment system. Is it the best one I've ever used? No. Am I dying to tell people about how good this Nissan infotainment system is? No. It's a pretty attractive overall look, especially when you're projecting your phone when you're just in Apple CarPlay. Um, but I mean, otherwise, it does react a little bit slow. And you know, I'm not. Yeah, you can see it's reconnecting to my phone. It does react kind of slowly, but I think some of these shortcuts in here make up for the other annoying things. Uh, when you're not on Apple CarPlay, to be honest, these menus aren't really the most attractive thing in the world. They do look kind of dated, um, in my opinion. But I mean, honestly, I would give this like a seven out of 10. I would, maybe even an eight. Maybe I would, I would give this a B um, for just overall functionality. And, uh, like I said, again, the shortcuts and then also just the ease of the wireless Apple CarPlay. If I, didn't, I didn't mention that earlier, but it does have wireless Apple CarPlay. So that is a pretty nice feature to have here with this infotainment. Um, although maybe I would knock it down because I can't figure out how to check the stupid uh, tire pressure. So 
Um, anyways, though, that'll wrap it up for us today. Uh, I hope you all have enjoyed this quick little tour here of the infotainment in this Nissan Rogue. Comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions. We are still in the early days of making these infotainment videos. So if there's a different style or something else you'd like to see, uh, make sure to let us know and we will certainly take that into consideration. But that's going to end it for us today. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Chris here with Daily Motor. And as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.